Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we're going to talk about optogenetics. In neuroscience, various methods have been used to stimulate the brain. For example, with magnetic or electric fields or with ultrasound. One limitation that all these brain stimulation methods have in common is that they stimulate a specific region that contains different types of neurons without discriminating between those neurons. Since different neuron types have different functions, wouldn't it be great if we could stimulate a specific set of neurons? Now, this is possible by using optogenetics. The main way in which optogenetics modulates neural activity is through light. It does this through activation of light-sensitive proteins called opsins. Such light-sensitive proteins can be found throughout nature, from archaeobacteria to mammals. These photosensitive proteins help these organisms to detect sources of light, which is crucial for their survival. For example, in humans, rhodopsin can be found in the rods of the retina in the eyes, and they convert light into an electrical signal and thereby they activate the photoreceptor cell. So if there are light-sensitive proteins that can make neurons fire, it may be possible to place these proteins in other types of cells. If we would do this, they also would start to react to light and we can activate them at will by the flip of a switch. This is exactly what optogenetics intends to do. Ok, so let's say we have a neuron that now has light sensitive opsins. What happens? In order for a neuron to induce an action potential, in other words a signal from one neuron to another, it allows for the influx of electrically charged particles, such as calcium or sodium. This influx is caused by the opening of so-called ion channels, which happen to be protein molecules. All neurons have ion channels. Some of these ion channels react to a change in membrane potential and others react to the arrival of a neurotransmitter. But most importantly for optogenetics, some ion channels react to the stimulation of light. The most well-known light-sensitive protein in the field of optogenetics is channel rhodopsin. Channel rhodopsin naturally occurs in green algae and is sensitive to blue light. So that means, if you would have a neuron that has channel rhodopsin, you only need to shine blue light on it and it will fire. But the question is, how do we get channel rhodopsin into a specific neuron? That is where we need some genetic engineering. The goal is to change the genetic makeup of a cell, such that it will express channel rhodopsin. Importantly, the morphology and function of different cell types is to a large extent defined by the pattern of genes they express. And which genes they express determines, among other things, which ion channels the neurons have. So if we can change the genetic makeup of a cell, we can make it to have light-gated ion channels. But then the question is, how do we change the genetic expression of a neuron? Well, for that we use viruses. When a virus infects a cell, it enters its own genetic material. Obviously, for optogenetics, we're not just going to use any virus. We are going to make our own that specifically targets certain neurons and that can promote the expression of channel rhodopsin. So, in summary, we use artificial viruses to change the genetic makeup of a neuron, such that it now creates light-sensitive ion channels. This will make the neuron fire if light is shined onto it. It is also worth pointing out that there are other light-sensitive ion channels, such as halo rhodopsin and RK rhodopsin, which will inhibit the cell if exposed to light. So, optogenetics can become a game-changer in treating neurological and psychiatric disorders in the future. However, the translation from research in invertebrates and small mammals to larger mammals, such as primates and humans, proves to be quite difficult. The standard strategies that are used in mice to express opsins cannot be directly applied to primates. Furthermore, the brains of primates and humans are much larger and more complex. And on top of that, there is the ethical question whether such research would be okay to do in humans. Anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed the explanation about optogenetics. If you did, consider giving this video a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.